Valda Lewis, I'm 36 and I live in New Orleans and I've been here 10 years and I produce, I'm not a native, I'm from Rayleigh, Essex in England. <coughs> I'm out to my family and uh, in April I got married and my mother was here and two of my three sisters and uh, it was quite a gay affair and I produced just for the record. I have done for five years. It's a gay and lesbian uh, public access cable television show for by and about the gay and lesbian community. And Judith here has some questions. <laughs> Go. Well, as you started on the first one already, describe what kind of show you produce. Just for the record, the origins of Just for the Record was to document an historical doc documentation of the gay and lesbian uh, community here in New Orleans. And um, the kind of show that I do is a magazine format, what we call a magazine format, and it covers issues and events of concern to the lesbian and gay community, not always about the lesbian and gay community, but, but most of the time it is, and AIDS issues, things that are coming up, things that have happened, and uh, mental health issues, legal issues, uh, new books, films, really anything that the gay and lesbian community needs to know about and sometimes things that they don't even know they need to know about but they find out about. Why uh, do you think it's important to make lesbian and gay television handle? I think that the primary motivation is to present positive images of gay and lesbian people. I think that um, it's very important for uh, people to know that there are other people. One of the hardest things about coming out is that you think you're alone, that there is no, everybody else is in the closet, and so you have to break the cycle somewhere. Does America have a network to lesbian and gay television show? I think several attempts have been made to network. I think that um, finances is the main reason why nothing has been successful on, on an ongoing basis. And so I do receive shows from other parts of the country that I program on the Access Channel here in New Orleans. And likewise, I send my program to other uh, producers around the country that are uh, able to program gay and lesbian uh, shows. And so there's a sort of a, a network there's no one show that is going to air simultaneously across the country. You said that you make just for the record with a shoestring budget and uh, most of the volunteers. What is it that keeps you going? <laughs> oh, um, I'm really motivated. I really like what I'm doing and I'm learning all the time. I get very excited. I think it's a very political thing and um, I just get a, a good sense of achievement. It's certainly not for the pay. Um, but there's other things that, that spin off stuff, uh, like the Deep Dish Project. Would you say then, uh, as far as priorities are concerned, that your main one is to educate a straight audience or to entertain a gay and lesbian audience? Uh, the original motivation, and I, th I think uh, we were very much aware that a straight audience may be watching the show. And in 1986, uh, New Orleans uh, City Council um, failed to pass a civil rights ordinance that would have given equal rights to the gay and lesbian community. And I was horrified at the, the so-called straight people's attitude towards the gay and lesbian community and, and how they saw us. And so it was perhaps part of the motivation was to say, well, hey, you know, we're not all like that, and in fact, hardly any of us are like that, if any of us, and this is how we are. But as time has gone on, I've begun to realize that it's really a show for the lesbian and gay community, and my main, pri my main concern is to program things for my target audience, and to be aware that other uh, aspects of the New Orleans community may watch and they can take it or leave it, and within the, wor the realms of good taste, um, my main concern is to entertain and inform the, the uh, gay and lesbian community here. I am aware of a broader audience, and so I might give a broader uh, overview of a situation. Um, I always assume that people know nothing, 
And so when I'm presenting a new subject, I'll start with grassroots uh, on up. Do programs like this get lost amid the output of a public access cable channel? I think it's very, very important to have a good presentation, to, to, to do the best that you can with what you have, and so that you hope that that doesn't happen, that you don't get lost uh, amongst the other public access programs. I think public access is a wonderful thing, and but there are certainly a lot of programs that could do with a facelift, could certainly be presented in a better way. But uh, everybody's out there, uh, you know, doing what they can do. So um, I try and do the best that I can. I think it's important to get as much out of the studio situation as possible. Use field footage. We try and use at least half of our program as at least field field production. And uh, I think it makes a difference. Just for the record, it goes to Lafayette, Louisiana. And it goes to Nashville in Tennessee, Austin, Texas, Sacramento, California. And they send it on to Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Canada. So we're, we're international. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great. One of my favorite segments is Mindy Milam and her mental health segment. She keeps us on our toes with relationship issues dating skills, how to overcome the holiday blues, how to decide whose house, whose parents you're going to stay with during Christmas and how to tell them that you're sleeping together. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of differences between gay men and lesbians and I think to, to say that there isn't is, you know, foolhardy. I think that it's important to, to, to accommodate the, the broad spectrum of the community from male to female and uh, all the other d diverse aspects of the community. The gay community, the lesbian community s spans every social uh, and cultural, ethnic um, minorities, um, the whole span of humanity. And so, you know, we, tr we try very hard to be inclusive of, of all the different aspects. Um, I try and get men involved to present the male issues. And, uh, we try and give a, a, a balanced program that's going to appeal across the board. Overall, how do you see lesbian and gay broadcast in, in America progressing? I mean, regular television music? Lesbian and gay broadcasting in America progressing. I guess it's similar to the we have a network show. Well, ca cable cast is what we do on cap public access. Mm -hmm. And broadcast would be like PBS. So it's, we don't have a very bright future, but we try all the time to encourage more um, <coughs> gay and lesbian themed programming on mainstream television. And we just had the Lost Language of Cranes, a heavily censored version. And, uh, but it was nice that it was played. We had an enormous uproar last year with Marlon Riggs' Tongues Untied. Um, it's uh, it's hard for the so most part, aggressive. really. For the most part, mainstream television will put on gay and lesbian programming that will try and ease the straight audience uh, into accepting or being more accepting of the, our lifestyle. So it's not really for gay, a, a gay and lesbian audience. Although we are so hungry to see programming that is about us, that we will accept something less than even the best, out, huh? even with all the sex cut out. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's important, or maybe even why do you think it's important that lesbians and gays get access to the network? They're using the word network I suppose, as opposed to cable, but I'm, yeah. I'm not sure here. I think that mm. as supposedly at 10% of the population at least, that we have a right to public broadcast time and that we need to have our own programming and the way that we do it right now is through uh, shows like Just For The Record and um, I think that as time goes on, maybe, maybe we, if we wake up tomorrow this will all be a dream, <laughs> a nightmare and uh, it will be different when we wake up in the morning. Suddenly it runs exclusively lesbian and gay programs. <laughs>
Well, we thinking. have the Playboy <laughs> channel. I mean, what more do you want? <laughs> what have you got up your sleeve for just for the record in the future? Well, live programming, I think, would be an exciting move. Um, it wouldn't be the first cable access gay and lesbian show to be live. Uh, they're live all the time in New York, and I think that um, that, it, that there's certainly an advantage to that. You're more current, but and um, also when when you're off the air, then it's over, and so you can't you know the mistakes are there and it goes out, and uh, you don't have to work so hard in. <laughs> In cleaning it all up, although obviously, you know, I would strive to not make the mistakes in the first place. But uh, the live aspect would be neat. I'd like a call-in show, um, a news, and uh, that kind of stuff. Would be over by satellite to the UK? Let's be, well, we could do that. Let's do that, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about Deep Dish. Okay. Uh, Deep Dish Television uh, It's a national satellite uh, access television company in New York that does two or three series a year on a particular subject and last year they did one on the censorship, behind censorship, the assault on civil liberties and I was asked to do a program about lesbian and gay censorship issues and it was very exciting and it was a 28 minute piece and it was completed last May and I got a lot of calls uh, a lot of referrals from that piece and that was satellited out nationally to about 350 public access cable uh, stations or producers that so it was played across the country and so that was really neat and it put me in touch with a lot of other independent producers the footage came from um, just about every state I had a lot of stuff to go through and if, if when you're looking for footage about the gay and lesbian community you can't call the network stations and say send me what you have on lesbian and gay issues because they don't have any and so you're looking for people like myself who are out there just documenting it for whatever reason and so a lot of people sent me their stuff and I put some of it together in a way that I thought reflected the struggles that we as a community across the country um, the struggles that we've we put ourselves into in order to gain our, our civil rights. So it was exciting. Uh, that was in fact an award winning documentary, wasn't it? I think you too modestly forgot uh, to mention it. The National Federation of Local Cable Programmers has placed me as a finalist. Top four. I don't know which one yet with this piece. And it's played at the Chicago Lesbian and Gay Film Festival and in Detroit and a couple of other places, you know, here and there.